Hi there, my name is Emmy, and in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Ray dashboard as a powerful tool for understanding your Ray cluster. Observability tools like the dashboard are critical for monitoring the internal state of your system so that you can effectively debug and optimize your applications. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's what the Ray dashboard looks like, and as you can see, it's a web-based interface that gives you this real-time view of your cluster. You can access the dashboard in a few ways. If you're an open source user, each time you initialize a new Ray cluster with Ray.init, you'll have your dashboard hosted by default at localhost 8265. In order to see these updating time series metrics, you're going to need to configure Prometheus and Grafana, and we have instructions for doing so in our Ray documentation. If you're an AnyScale user, these time series metrics will be built in for you, and you can access the dashboard underneath your tools tab. First, let's talk about navigation. The Ray dashboard is split into several different tabs that you can switch between to get different views of your Ray cluster, and we'll be walking through each of these in turn. Here I am on my main overview page, and we can see quick links to common views. For example, I can see my current cluster utilization by each physical resource, my active nodes, my recent jobs, as well as any events such as auto scaling activity. Now let's take a look at the jobs tab in further detail. Here I can see the jobs that I've run, and I can click into any given job to access more information about my tasks, resources, nodes, and more. I'll leave a more thorough walkthrough of each of these features for another video in this series, but generally, this view offers rich insight into your Ray cluster with popular features like a task progression breakdown bar. So I can go ahead and expand and see the status of my active tasks, task timeline support with Perfetto, as well as summary tables by each resource. Under Serve, you'll see dedicated information specifically designed for monitoring online inference with useful metrics such as queries per second and information about latency. You'll also be able to probe deeper into your applications by looking at deployments as well as the individual replicas within them. Moving on to the cluster tab. Here I can view my active and inactive nodes, and I can use this tab to make sure that the cluster is running smoothly. So for instance, I might be able to diagnose an issue where a particular node is using a lot of CPU or a lot of memory, and I might need to take steps to optimize my performance by taking a look at the logs, stack traces, as well as flame graphs. Next, let's take a look at my actors tab. And this tab shows you the actors that have existed. And if you inspect each, you can find more metadata as well as a history of tasks that are associated with each actor. One of the most useful tabs for monitoring is the metrics tab, which integrates with Grafana to provide several visualizations that can help you understand what's happening in your cluster. I can take a look at real-time data on tasks and actors to view their status. Scrolling down, I can look at Ray resource usage to see how Ray is using my available resources. And finally, hardware utilization to see activity by node. Finally, the dashboard also includes access to logs, which are filterable and searchable, so I can always find what I need in order to debug and diagnose my problem. So that wraps up our quick tour of the Ray dashboard. I've shown you how to navigate the different views of the dashboard, as well as giving you an overview of the most useful features. If you're using Ray, I highly recommend that you develop the habit of having the dashboard visible as you work so that you can understand your cluster's performance in real time. If you're interested in learning more about how to debug or optimize your applications further, keep reading for more resources and thanks for watching.